Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is my third recording of my Abyss Chapter 1 tutorial. Um, my old VOD got deleted by Twitch, so this is kind of a re-re-recording, again, like you heard in the Blend Rust video. Um, Abyss Chapter 1 is a pretty simple level, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can only go so fast in Titans, so the, the movement is pretty optimized. Uh, the boost path is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Uh, probably most of this level is going to be spent on explaining the wall boost and everything that comes after. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on the boost path for the start of Abyss Chapter 1. Um, like I, well, I kinda, I'm just going to explain this pretty briefly and we'll move on to wall boost since that's going to be like the big, the big point here. So um, without further ado, we'll get started. Um, right off the bat, as soon as you load in, uh, thing you're, the thing you're going to want to do is you just do a... Hello? There we go. You do a slide, jump to the right, and you just wall kick off and get to VT. I don't think I need to go over that too much. That's pretty simple. Um, so this is when this is when like we really get started. So first off, as soon as you get in VT, um, I'll explain real quick what optimal Titan boosting. So optimal Titan boosting is... Uh, is you want to be using it when you go off a ledge or when you go around a corner. Um, BT is really heavy, so he tends to kind of throw his weight around corners. As you can even see when I'm right here, he's kind of sliding. And then, of course, if you're boosting off a ledge, there's no friction that's stopping you from moving forward. Um, so you can you usually combine both of those pretty well. Um, the boost path is pretty simple. Um, you can just kind of memorize these locations in, in your mind. I'm not sure where else you'd memorize them, but you get the idea. So first things first, there's a ledge right here. We boost off. Oh, one more thing to note. You always want to keep a boost charging. Um, you don't want to have two boosts stacked pretty much ever, unless you're setting up for wall boost, which again, I'll get to later. So, around corners, off ledges, um, always have a boost charging. All right, so, boost right here. And then uh, BT is going to talk about watching our watching our step. You don't really have to worry about that. Um, as soon as you land right here, you just kind of look slightly to the right. You boost here. Um, when you're coming up right, when you're coming up to this part, you have to be careful of the geometry on either side. Especially on this right side, you can kind of bonk some stuff. So the best thing to do is just kind of aim right for this little crevice right there. You can just run straight up. Um, as soon as you get here, uh, I like to look about right there when I do my boost. Again, there's some geometry right here that you can bonk. So if you looked just to the right of that tree and you jump right here and you boost off, I usually do like a little bit of a strafe to the right as well. That takes you right here. Um, yeah, again, pretty simple stuff. As soon as you get here, uh, we're going to run over this and then uh, you can actually run straight up the side of this corner here you want to be careful not to take the corner too sharply because um, you can actually bonk but as you can see like the game will just kind of push you up when you run up this so it's pretty simple um, just be careful not to take it too sharply because then you'll just like bonk it like that but again you can get away with a lot right here you can see like the vertical distance I covered just by walking straight up now we're gonna pick up scorch here and then you boost off of this uh, this titan leg right here. It actually, it's a little bit of a ledge that you can get some, you can get a nice little slide off of. And then again, when you come around this corner, you have to be careful of the geometry on the on the inside. There's just some kind of invisible wall that you can bonk there, as you can see. So you kind of just take a bit of a wide arc. You can even see I bonked something right there, and I was pretty far to the outside. So that just kind of gives you an example. Um, we're going to be aiming right here. We're going to dash off in this direction and then strafe slightly to the left. So without bonking that, of course. Now we come down here. And so this this is, this is part's a pretty tricky boost. Um, I normally look for this corner right there. And what I'll do here is I will, I'm gonna dash toward the wall and then strafe left. And ideally not bonk my head on the ceiling there, though I do sometimes still do that. There we go. So that's pretty much, a, that's a perfect example of what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I boost at the wall and then strafe slightly left. That's usually the best way to get down there and to keep your speed. All right, so you're gonna come down here and next thing that you do is uh, you're gonna, this is, you're gonna look sharp right and then uh, boost and then strafe sharp right as well. So as soon as you get right here, you can kind of like, you can almost boost when you're facing this way and then strafe the rest of the way. So it's about like that. If you, if you watch my inputs, this is actually like a pretty tight movement. But that's normally the best way to do that optimally. And then as soon as you land, you're, you're going to have another boost coming up. So you do it from the top, and then you boost again once you're here. 
This one's pretty simple. You boost off. I usually strafe left and right a little bit. Come around this corner. Boost here. And then once you get to this ledge, you boost again. And then right here is where the setup for Abyss 1 wall boost starts. So I'm going to go over all this one more time. Um, I'll just show it kind of all in one, ideally without any mistakes, and then we'll move on to Abyss wall boost. Or Abyss 1 wall boost. So, Major Anderson went this way. Jump over to BT. To the rendezvous point. I recommend we proceed. Dash. Watch our step. Dash. Dash. You can see I'm always going to have a boost charging as well. Dash. Dash straight left. Dash straight left. No bonk. Dash straight right. Dash left right. Dash. Okay. So, here we go. Can you dash off this ledge? Okay, so everything I said about boost management, throw that out the window. You have to hold two boosts here. So we're gonna wait till one charges. Boost here. Boost here. And then there's these two rocks on the right side. We're gonna boost, boost, as we're lined up with them. And there we go, and then we get boosted by this wall. I'm probably gonna die. Anyway, that's the idea of how it works. Um, so we'll go back and talk about everything that we're doing individually here. Um, let's see, I think I have a, let's see where my checkpoint is. Okay, that works. So we'll talk about everything that goes into this now. So basically, as soon as you get here, you're, you're um, there's a, you're hitting, you hit certain triggers at each part of the, at each part of the level here. Um, and so you need to save two boost charges so you can essentially like cheat out this assembly line is basically what's going on here. Um, so you're actually going to be storing your boosts. Um, so right here, we're going to, as soon as you come around the corner, it's like a sharp right and then you boost. And then once you get here, um, you might have to wait for the, a, a platform to come by. And as soon as the platform goes by, you boost. And then once you get right here, um, you're just going to hold these two dashes. And you'll see there's these two rocks that jut out on the right side. I use these to line up for my for the boost to shoot out the assembly line here. So I, you see they both have kind of like peaks to them, like right there, and then right there. I'm gonna be trying to boost here, and here, and then if you do that, you can beat out this uh this wall here. Now, once you actually hit the wall, is when a lot of different things can happen. Um, so it's actually pretty difficult. So I'll do my best to explain everything that happens here. So one of the things you need to be careful about this part is uh, you don't want to go to you don't want to like aim yourself too far to the right like this because if you do then you'll just miss it. So you want to aim a bit to the left here. Um, I wonder if I can get back up here. No, I can't. That doesn't look like there's another one that's gonna come. So you want to aim a sorry, a bit to the left here and then kind of shoot yourself down right here. Um, there's like a, a couple of different like variable timings that you can get with this wall boost. And so there's different things that can happen and there's different ways that you need to save yourself. So like if you don't do anything, once you get hit by the wall, and you just do this, you just die. The wall hits you and you die. But there's things that you can do to save yourself at the very end. And there's usually like three different scenarios that you'll find yourself in and you have to do different things each time. So I'll do my best to explain them. Because there's again a lot going on here. So again, we dash off here. I'm going to put myself a little bit far to the left. Dash, dash. Okay, so in this one, you have to disembark, jump out. So that's like that's kind of like the first of three. And the reason uh, you have to disembark out there is, it's like, I say disembark, jump. You just disembark out. Um, and that, for whatever reason, when you disembark, this like clips right through you, and uh, you survive. It's the slowest of the three options, but it is the one. It's like the most consistent way to save yourself. At least if I can get another option here. I think I boosted a bit early. Yeah, and so what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to dash out at the very end. This is like the second fastest way to get through here. Oh, fuck. Um, but it's pretty difficult to line up. I'm personally struggling with this trick a lot right now in, in single player, or sorry, in, uh, in runs. So if you have, uh, maybe ask him about it later on stream. Okay. So that's an example of when it goes perfectly. And the best way to identify this is um, when you're going down here, 
I'm gonna see if I can do this actually. So the, be the best identifier here is you're gonna be like kind of judging by how the wall is pushing you and like how much your camera is shaking. So you dash here, dash here. Okay, so right here, if you get a boost like this, the be uh, if you get a boost like that and you don't have any like forward momentum right there, uh, if you can't actually like look down to the left and start running that direction, the best thing to do is disembark. Um, the way I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to give you an example of when, you're, when you can dash out, because that's, that's pretty important. If you kind of hug the wall the entire time, um, that's when you can just kind of like run out at a certain angle and survive, but it's pretty hard to find that angle. Okay, so this is the proper example. So I, you, if you look vertically to the, sorry, vertically, if you look like 45 degrees left and you hug the wall the entire time, like I just did there, um, you can generally just run straight out. You don't have to boost or anything. That, that's like the most optimal way to do it. But getting that lineup can be pretty tough. Um, it just kind of depends on how well you did your boost right there. So it's pretty, it, it could be pretty tough to, to line up, but I'm trying to find an example of the other one here. All right, so here, if you get boosted like this, you look straight down to the left and you can just dash out at the very end. Um, so if you, if, you're, if you have enough sense to know when you're about to get boosted like that, if you look straight down to the left and you sprint down that way, you can actually like dash out at the end before the platform hits you. So it's, um, it's tough to time. This is, a, this is one of those tricks that just benefits from me practicing it over and over again and recognizing the different situations. But again, there's like three different main things that can happen and that's how you react to each one. Yeah, so right here I'm gonna have to disembark out. Sometimes you get shot by the brute when you do this or BT runs away. This is what makes this really slow. Um, so again, yeah, just a trick that benefits from practicing it over and over and over and understanding how to get out of each situation. So, after you do the boost, after you do the boost and you get down here, um, you normally find yourself kind of plopped out about right here. Um, there's a little shortcut you can take. And so what you do here is you just run straight up along this line here, kind of where these batteries are. And then the game will just, um, the game will just pop you right up on top of this guy here, just like that. And so once you're up on top of this, you look to the left, and uh, you can actually dash from here. You dash and hold crouch, and that puts you up on top of this thing. So this is a pretty nice shortcut. Um, and that's what makes wall boost so good, is you can just go straight to this thing. Um, we actually we had known about this strat for a really long time, but we didn't know about that little shortcut to get up on top of the ledge there and then dash over here. Um, so it wasn't faster until Tasky found out that you could that you could do that. Um, so in pretty much any scenario that you find yourself in, um, you just come over here, run up here, look to the left, dash hold crouch. So, if you do end up getting the dash out though, uh, you'll find yourself, you're kind of like way ahead of that platform that I was talking about, and the brute will sometimes get in your way. So, uh, in that situation, okay, here we go. So in this situation, so imagine I just dashed out. You're gonna be out of your dashes, you're gonna be waiting for him to charge. You come over here and you punch this brute, and then you wait for your dash to charge, and then you dash across. That prevents him from getting in your way um, and messing and blocking you and doing a bunch of other nasty things. So that just avoids all of that. Um, yeah, and that pretty much covers the visible wall boost. There's not really a lot more I can say about it. Um, if you're watching this like two months after the video was posted, Maybe leave a comment in my stream or something like that. Ask if I know anything, any better advice about the wall boost. This is, again, it's kind of hard for me to explain everything here because it's a strat that I'm struggling with in runs right now. So it's uh, I don't feel super confident with explaining the ins and outs of it. Again, but this this, this is a pretty good base to get you started. So now we'll move on to, to door clear. So door clear, there's three titans that spawn here. And uh, you have to kill all three of them to get the door to open. So the fastest way to do this is we're gonna uh, we're gonna switch to Scorch. First things first. And so once we get like about right here, 
um, this door is going to open. And then once it does open, I'm going to aim. Uh, I usually aim like about like right there. About right above the door. And you just toss out a toss out a flame trap and you toss out another one right in front of him. And so then once you have those two flame traps out, you're going to use a flame wall or whatever this, whatever this ability is called that ignites them. And so you kind of have to watch how these titans are dashing. Um, this is like really good RNG when the tone dashes forward. Uh, if the tone dashes forward, you just use flame shield. Or you can literally just sit here and they pretty much all die. And that clears them out pretty nicely. Um, so the main thing here is going to be reacting to how each of the titans are moving. Put up flame shield. And then in this case, we'd use, uh, we'd use flame core. Kill the tone. So uh, there's just a lot of different things that can happen here. Sometimes you'll have the, the brute that dashes out in front of you. Uh, but in gen generally speaking, if you don't know where the brute is, so let's say like, let's pretend you've killed two titans here, and you don't know where the third brute is, he probably that probably means he dashed behind you. So like you know you normally see like the reaction, turn around flame four. Is uh, the best thing I found here. So there's like, this could be kind of random, but you can generally control the situation pretty well. And again, this, this was like a little bit unlucky. You just kind of have to like uh, react to where each Titan is going and eliminate them as fast as possible. But Scorch is always going to be fastest here. And one more time, just for good measure. I'm trying to show you like different RNG examples. Yeah. And again, that's really good RNG. So that's door clear. It's pretty simple. Um, again, just practice it. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just a matter of keeping an eye on the on the Titans when they move. Yeah, and that's this is perfect RNG. You don't even have to use flame core right there. All right, so once you get right here, the door opens. You run to the right. Um, shit, I should explain this better. If you usually have a dash, so you dash here and then you dash here. Um, so then you get about right here. Uh, and there's a couple different ways you can go about this. I'll do them from like hardest to easiest. The hardest strat is one I've only nailed a few times in runs. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But the idea is, is that you disembark right here. You're going to do what's called a disembark boost. And so a disembark boost is when you hold forward and crouch as you're disembarking from a titan. And it gives you a burst of speed forward. Or sorry, not forward and crouch. Forward and shift, I believe is what it is. I think, am I, am I, what am I forgetting here? There's a forward and crouch, hold up. Okay, it's forward and crouch. Forward and crouch as you're disembark disembarking from a titan and it gives you a disembark forward. I'm silly. So you stand about right here, forward crouch, and you're gonna get a, a slide hop right off the top of this crate here. And so from this uh, slide hop, you actually do a, you do a really high arcing double jump and then you bunny hop off this pipe. You can actually just like flat out clear this, like you end up landing on top of this pipe here. So it's really difficult. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try it once, but I'm probably not gonna get it because it's that hard. But it is like the fastest way through here. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, I almost got it. That's how it, that's how it's like basically supposed to look aside from the mantle. So you're not supposed to mantle there. You just end up slide hopping and you go all the way through here. Um, alternatively, the other uh, the other ways that are still, I mean, this one, this, this second method is like not that much slower, honestly. Go here. Check your HUD for the control panel. Jump, jump off the pipe. Don't mantle there, and you can just continue through here. Um, there's not again, not a lot to this route. It's pretty simple. Let's do a quick save here. Disembark. Jump, jump. Land on the pipe. Jump, jump. And that'll, that'll let you continue in here. Um, sorry, wrong quick save. The main thing is, is getting a disembark boost, which is again holding crouch and forward as you get out. Do a strafe through here. And that gets you into here, which I'll explain after this. Um, the third slowest route, and this is going to be primarily for new runners, if you're not confident with this. Disembark. Do a double jump, land on the pipe, land on the wall, and then continue forward. 
Um, when you are going into this room, though, the most important thing is going to be your lineup as you come in. You want to be aiming at like a diagonal. And you want to be like double jumping up through here. Um, so what that allows you to do is uh, it gives you like a really nice arc that you can use to kind of arc through the room. So I'll, I'll showcase that right here. You cloak here, you go around these grunts, and that gets you like, it, it's just, it's really clean. It's really, really clean. And so if you have that diagonal angle when you come in, that's going to make all the difference. So right here, and then you just kind of do a jump over the box, and you can come around to the right of these guys, and that'll get you through. Um, and again, that works with any of these routes. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You just have to make sure you have that angle as you come in. It's okay to bonk off that wall right there. Pretty much every time you bonk off it, and it'll just put you in a straight line toward the button right here. Um, always make sure you're cloaking when you come in as well. Uh, that makes the grunt movement easier, easy enough to manage when you come out. I normally have an Eva shotgun here, but this is basically a shotgun. So you cloak right here, come around, press the button. And then once you get right here, you can actually bonk on this. So you have to be pretty careful of it. I normally do a little run, sprint, and then I'll uh, and I'll do a slide through here. So press the button, slide through here. Um, I'm going to aim for the right side of the door. Um, I'm going to aim for the right side of the door, and I'm going to be doing a strafe to the left all the way through. Kind of like the same way I came in. We're going to be taking that same like long uh, crescent on the way out. Um, you have, uh, it's, if you cloak through here and you got like a clean route, it's pretty easy to manage the grunt's movements. Yeah, so we come through here, press the button, jump to the right, and then do a big crescent arc through here. You can actually just do that all in one motion, which is really, really nice. <clears throat> so there are some tricks to that. There is, there's like a little bit of nuance to it. The main thing you have to be careful of is uh, there's like a couple of grunts that can get in your way. Most notably this guy right here. I usually just pop him on my way in. And then there could be a guy that gets in your way right here. You have to try and pop him on the way out. Um, let me just kill these guys real quick so I can explain the rest of this. So final things to note when you come through here. Um, is you want to um, you want to try and land about right here. You can land pretty closely in front of the in front of the crate here and like not mantle it. If, if you're landing right in, right in front of it, you're probably gonna mantle it. But in most cases, um, you can just come right around here. You can land like again really close to the crate, and at worst, um, you end up just like sliding across the top of it, which is fine. It slows you down enough to make this corner on coming around. Um, if you do end up coming around like a bit too fast. Come around here and like you're you can just like grab this wall right there and it uh takes you to the it takes you to this building right there this pipe has like or this pipe whatever this is this uh um cable has like a really big wall around the outside of it and so you can just use that to get to this building over here um i've been kind of messing with using it to get all the way over but it has such like a tricky wall to it that it's pretty hard to use and it's, it's not usually reliable for getting all the way over here Anyway, um, and I guess final things to note about getting outside around this building properly is uh, you just want to have like a big arcing strafe all the way through. It's fine to slide off the top there. Um, I normally just double jump as soon as I get it right about here and then grab, grab onto the building. Um, don't jump off the building too early. Don't get ahead of yourself. You can do a pretty long wall run before you arc around here. What about going around the other side of the cable? Um, it's a good, it's a good question, um, but it doesn't really do much more than going around the inside. Um, I mean, I guess if you want to get to the wall still, you can do this. I mean, you can use it as like a way to get to the wall, but it's, it's, uh, it's like it's the, the wall here is like a little weird, so I wouldn't mess too much with it. I mean, you can, you can like really get over here, probably we had a really, really nice boost from it, but getting that boost is pretty tough. So, in any case, I'll show this off one more time. And then as soon as you come around to the outside of this building here, 
You can actually just touch the button. Touch the button and then fall. And that moves you to the next level. It's really, really simple. Um, and that is uh, that is Abyss Chapter 1. So thank you guys for watching. I will uh, catch you in the next video. Hope this helped. If you have any questions, shout them out in the comments. Thank you guys.